I was around yeah, 13 or 12, I had my first fight at 13. And I actually started in Wing Chun and uh, Taekwondo. I'd go to school and all I'd think about was training and you know, what techniques we'd learn and things like that. So I'd be buzzing to get to training at the end of the day. And then eventually I found this gym around the corner. It was called Minotaurs at the time. That's before we were the Nolsey Academy. He was working really hard, really enjoying it, picking everything up really fast and that he could, he could be really good if he was to keep going. And he did. I went there on a Saturday and I, I fell in love with it so much. I just decided to, to stop the other martial arts and, and just concentrate on, on Thai boxing just because I felt it was a little bit more intense and we could you know, let go a little bit more in training and you know, maybe let your anger out a little bit as well. Yeah, I loved it so much I went back the next day to train and uh, the rest is history. He's still early in his career, 22 years old, UK number one, world champion and he's got a lot more to achieve. Hadouken! So the first fight I was, uh, I was 13 and uh, I think the guy was around 22, maybe, maybe older. Yeah, I wasn't nervous at all about the fight. I was. I was a bit excited, like a yeah, just like a kid, like a 13-year-old would be. Didn't know what to expect. Went in there with mad left head kicks and uh, tried to knock him out straight away and ran at him with jumping knees and stuff. Didn't know what I was doing, but I just enjoyed the whole environment. I had my mom there in my first fight. It was just uh, it was just something I knew I I wanted to do after that first fight. From there, it was just like one every couple of months or something. I'd always be doing some some sort of junior fight or or there'd always be something lined up. I was always in the gym training, so yeah, I was fighting, fighting a lot as a kid. I think he's very mature for his age. I think that's because he was fighting at a high level in the country from an early age. He's been around the guys, uh, older guys, people that have been there and done it, and he's learnt from them, he's learnt from their mistakes. I think it's all helped to make him more mature. Definitely as a Muay Thai athlete, with regards to his technique as well, it's the same. With life choices and training choices and career choices, it's all the same sort of thing, it's all connected. Because I was young, I was sometimes fighting guys who were a lot older than me. I think my technique was always there and I, that would get me through these fights, but they were just physically stronger. So I'd win some and I'd lose some at that age, but like that was at C class and B class. And now I think at A class where I'm a bit stronger, I'm a bit older now, I've got that man strength behind me and I've still got that technique. That's now showing I'm having a, if anything, an easier time in my fights now than, than what I did before when I was younger. There's probably a few, a few fights where I, I did a lot of learning and, and it was actually the losses um, the ones that I lost that really helped me. I think I was one of those people who would go away and look at the things I did wrong. I would just want to do everything I could do to redeem myself. A lot of fighters, I think, they see it as one result. So the fight, they get hung up on one fight rather than the career. Um, and by focusing on the career, you can see the progress. So even if you don't get the result, there's still a lot of positives there, things that worked, things that didn't work that you can correct. So by looking at the long picture, you've got a better chance of succeeding. This crowd's going wild! On paper, probably people would say that my fight with Nopakal um, would be the best on paper because he's, when at the time I beat him, he was Rajdam Nern number two. He was former Lumpini champion. He's been in there with people like Yusuf Bognum. So he, he was like really accomplished. He had a lot more experience than me. But a fight that meant the most to me was actually when I beat Conor McCormack because there was a bit of rivalry. I, I actually think Connor was better than Nopakal. Um, and, I, and I rated him, I watched Connor before and I knew he was really good. And there was a lot on the line, there was the Royal World title and it's for the UK number one spot. There's loads on the line and I had loads of people there, I sold loads of tickets. Connor's very technical. I remember Liam making Connor miss a lot, making him pay, uh, scoring effectively. But it was, it, it was every round was close but I feel Liam won every round. When I got that win, it was so satisfying. So, so that, one, that one meant the most to me, but on paper, probably people would say the knockout win was, was a bit bigger. It was definitely a good rivalry because it brought out the be best in both of the boys. So they fought fantastically. Uh, Connor fought brilliantly, Liam fought brilliantly, and really raised their game. Staying focused on the game plan, what we want to do, what we want to achieve. I remember he enjoyed the whole fight, which helps for you to fulfil your full potential. Both guys are settling for the decision here. McCormick thinks he's got it. I'm not so sure myself.
think it's the, the gym environment that, that pushes me and, you know, having good training partners and, and I think having Chris Knowles who, you know, he, he does really believe in us, uh, in all of us who, who train with him and, and I think there, there is something a little bit different and a little bit special training, training there and, and uh, I think that's why we're getting talked about a lot now and, and that's why, uh, that's what pushes me now, yeah. I think he's a, a big influence on not just me but all the guys in the gym. Like I said, there, there's just something different, I think, between him and maybe other coaches. He, he wants us to win, you know. When we're going in and fo we're fighting, you know, he's taking every punch and kick with us and that's how it feels and, and uh, you know, he, he truly wants us to, to win our fights and do well, you know. And, he, and like I said, the belief is there, you know, and he can make you believe. So, you know, I, I think I'm in definitely the right place for training and, and someone to guide me, yeah. If you believe you can do something and you stay focused, determined and committed, I think that's the most important thing, to show up for training on the days that you don't want to, which uh, Liam has to do. I think that shows that if you set a goal, you can achieve it. My last three fights, first one was Nopakau. Um, that fight was... Yeah, it was very different because it was my first one really at a level like that. From that one, yeah, it was, it was different because he came to fight, but there was times where I let him off because maybe I respected him a bit too much. And then I let him into the fight and then he did try to, to knock me out and he tried to, and he let his hands go. And that was because I let him back into the fight. So from that fight, I sort of learned you have to go for it. Don't, don't ever let them off, you know, be in the fight and be there to, to finish if you need to. Because I could have done it earlier, I felt, but I didn't, I let him off too much in that fight. And that was just out of respect, I think. The next fight was then Enrico Kell. With that one, it was more a case of just getting used to this new, new way of weighing in, this new sort of platform, because it's, I've never done it like that before. Yeah, we, we had a lot, of, a lot of mistakes leading up to that fight on the week of the fight. The training went fine um, the six weeks before. It was just the week of the fight. Uh, things went wrong with the diet and there's, a, there's a, a lot of different ways they do it compared to other shows. So, so I was a bit in shock with the way they did it and, and it showed in that performance. Although I think I, I might have won the first round, yeah, the, the energy went, I think that's due to reasons outside of, of the ring. That's, that's why I might have lost that one. Having data for him to look back at and realise that the growth is there, that he's improving all the time. I think that was key. Being able to deal with the challenge of, Liam mentioned it earlier, the hydration, learning how to do that effectively and still be in your best shape. That was a massive learning curve for Liam, but I think most importantly is seeing that he can do it. And in my opinion, he's still fighting within himself. What I see in the gym hasn't actually been um, exposed and he hasn't showed his full potential yet, but at the same time he's growing at very good rates and we can see the progression. The most recent one was against Bang Linoy. And yeah, I felt, I felt really good in there. I mean, we trained, we trained well. I did only a three week camp for that one. And one of the weeks I was actually in Vegas helping Salah. Bang Linoy. Oh, no one drops him with a left hand. No, no knockdown there. It was mentally very, very challenging that fight because I had to train myself for, for one week in Vegas. There was a lot of flying about, you know, fly to Vegas, fly back. I was here for a week in London, did one week's training, then flew out to Bangkok and then did the fight. So yeah, it was a crazy one, that one, but mentally it was, it was hard to get through, to keep myself in it and to say like, okay, we're training for Bangkok, you know, it's going to be hard, you know. And it wasn't the usual case of just training with Chris and you know in the gym with the boys because I was just flying about all the time. So yeah, mentally uh, I grew a lot from that fight, and I was I was happy with my performance at the end of the fight as well. You know I was happy with how I performed, and you know it's it's another it's another fight where you know I know I can fight at this level, and I know I do do belong here. So yeah, I think the sky's the limit. I think he'll go very very far. I think this is just the beginning, as you said. It's only really been three four fights. Um, and he's growing all the time and getting better. The show's fantastic. And the fact that they, they pick it up and they put it in a different country. So although you're in a different country, Liam was so much more comfortable in his second appearance because it felt like he was at the same show, which he was obviously, it, albeit in a different country. So he settled into everything, the hydration, the weight cuts, the training. He settled into everything so much more comfortably. And I think that's going to keep continuing so he makes it his home and gets to show everyone what he's capable of. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the one is now probably the biggest platform for 
definitely a, a Thai boxer, a Muay Thai fighter. Probably if you'd asked me before what, what my biggest goal was, it'd probably, I'd probably say I oh, to be the number one guy, to be you know, the best fighter. But now, now that I'm getting more experience, now I'm sort of understanding more, I think there's no such thing as just the number one guy. I think the whole the belt thing is an illusion, you know. There's, there's maybe like a top five or maybe even a top ten fighters. And, you know, I just want to mix with the, the best guys and, and keep fighting at this level, you know. That's what I want.